So if you watch my previous videos, you have already set up and written your personal statement. All of your activities are planned to written out. Now the last step, figuring out what schools you want to apply to. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. I'm going to share the resources that I use and the school list that I came up with in order to apply to medical school. So sit back and relax as we embark on the journey of MD in the making. What's up YouTube? Hope you're having a great day. My name is Jason Crassy. I'm an incoming first year medical student and in this video I'm going to cover how I came up with my school list. So let's jump right into it. But before we do, you guys may have noticed I have a different background here. I'm back with family in sunny California and thought I should switch it up. But that's besides the point. Let's jump right in. So we're going to get started here with a little voice to cover AMSAR. AMSAR is the medical school's admissions requirements, and it's a database held by AAMC that covers all the pertinent information that you would need when applying to medical school. There's a lot of stuff, and we'll get into what kind of information they hold, but I wanna show you guys the website. I'll leave the link in the description below. The main thing that I wanted to show you guys here is the fact that there's a one-year subscription and a two-year subscription. So if you look here, the one-year subscription will cost you $28 versus the two-year subscription will cost you $36. So I'd recommend going with the two-year subscription. Just like I said, you never know what may happen. So let's get into the actual details of what MSAR holds. Now, this page has all information associated with Albany Medical College. As you can see on the left, there are tabs here that you can shift through in order to see or jump to different sections. The main one that I want to jump to is acceptance data. So when you click on that, it drops you down to the MCAT, and if you scroll a bit lower, it'll show your GPA. Now the key points I wanna share here is that it shows you where the 25th percentile is for the MCAT range, which is denoted here in this blue segment. Now this information I think is vital. So when you're applying to medical school, I would advise against applying to a school in which your MCAT score is below the 25th percentile. Though you still have a chance of getting into that medical school with a lower MCAT or GPA, it's far less likely to be true shown by the statistics here. So my personal cutoff was the 25th percentile for MCAT or GPA. Now a cool feature that they have here is that you can enter your own MCAT score and in doing so it will show up and populate on the list itself. So this is the MCAT section, and if we scroll a bit lower, you can see that it's also broken up into the subsections. And again, I would say that you wanna be above the 25th percentile or the blue region of each subsection as well. Then if we jump further down, we can go into the GPA. The GPA is broken up into total GPA and your science GPA, and I still think the same rules apply. You wanna be above the 25th percentile. Now, this is my own recommendation, and you're more than welcome to not follow it at all. But like I said, you just have lower chances of being accepted into that program. Beyond that, the next set of important information that I would highlight is the matriculation data for the first year class. In here, you can see in-state versus out-of-state, the number of applicants that they had, the number of interviews that they had, lastly, the number that were matriculated in-state versus out-of-state. So if we take this Albany Medical College, for example, they have more out-of-state applicants and they also accept more out-of-state students. Now we're gonna take all this information that I had here, as well as some other information in order to create that Excel file like I had. So like I showed you in the example of Albany Medical College, I want you guys to run through and do the same thing for all the other schools listed. So the first filter that medical students have is MCAT and GPA. So if you're within those requirements, then I think you're setting yourself up for success. And then we'll filter on later through there because of the total number of schools listed. So let's jump back to my Excel file and talk about the important things that I noted here. For each school, I noted the average GPA. I took note of the 25th percentile for the MCAT, took note of the average MCAT, the percent out of state that matriculated, percent out of state that were interviewed, the tuition, and then I left a space for an about section if I wanted to make more notes there. So a caveat that I wanna put in here. Because I'm a California student, it is very difficult to get into California state schools. 
Now that might seem contradictory for a lot of other states, but there is a running joke in California saying the number one export is medical students. Because of the size and population of California, there are so many students applying to medical school that there aren't enough spots to fill. So like I said, the number one export from California is medical students. I felt that I had a lower chance of getting into a California state school. I then focused my priority on private out of state institutions. Because they're private, they don't give a priority to their in-state students, like you saw in the previous example with Albany having more matriculants from out of state than in state. But what comes with the cost of a private institution is the increase in tuition, which is painful to see for a lot of medical schools. So you guys can see that I marked which school had an MCAT score above my MCAT. If you guys watched my previous video in which I share my full AAMC application, you guys will see my MCAT score was a 512. And the same thing would be done for GPA in which the 25th percentile GPA would be above your own GPA. Now I wanna mark the percent of out of state that were interviewed and matriculated. Now this is important information because a lot of schools have an in-state bias, meaning that though they will interview and accept students from out of state, it's a very small percentage and therefore is unlikely to be worth your time in applying, especially when it comes to secondaries and you have to write a bunch of them. I calculated percent interviewed and percent matriculated from out of state. All I did was I took the percent that were interviewed or matriculated from out of state from the total and created a percentage based on that. Now, the highlighting that I have organized here is I highlighted anything that was 5% or less of the total number. Now, I get 5% as a rough estimate on how likely or in this case, unlikely I were to be interviewed. The last part that I wanna make note of is tuition. Now, for a lot of the schools I was applying to, because I was out of state and I knew that I would be unlikely to compete with the in-state students, I had to look at private schools which means they have a massive price tag next to them. You can even notice that for the in-state California schools that I did apply to, the tuition was closer to 35,000. Whereas for private schools, they can jump up to 62, and I even saw some schools at $90,000 a year. So you have all this basic information on MCAT, GPA, percent out of state, interviewed and matriculated, and tuition. The last part that I wanna note is location. Location is vital. Now think about yourself being put in that medical school. Let's say you got accepted. Would you spend four years at that institution in the location? Do you prefer a rural area? Do you prefer a suburban area? Or do you prefer an urban area? In my case, I love the city life. So a lot of the schools that I try to focus in my attention on were schools in a metropolitan city. Now if you look at the school and you can't imagine yourself living there for four years, I would recommend taking it out. And then the last part that I would note is look at the mission statement of the university. Does your own mission statement or your, in essence, your why or your personal statement match or fit in to the school itself? Some schools are very research-based. Do you have a big emphasis in research? A lot of schools have an emphasis in public service. Do you have an emphasis in public service in your own work? And that's the best way to combine them together in order to, to really fit in and to make sure that when admissions committees see your personal statement, they will know that you're the perfect fit for them. So this was the file that I created to come up with what schools I want to apply for. Now I'll leave the link to the AMSAR down below. I would recommend the two-year subscription because you never know what may happen. So please be sure to like and subscribe and turn on that post notification bell. That way you guys can see the videos and know when they're coming up because that helps grow the channel so much. And I can't wait to see all of you guys become future medical students as you all embark on your own journey of MD in the making. <laughs>